Well, would you look at our brand new galley? We've gone from taking this back to a bare shell with horrible peeling formica countertops <laughs> to bright white stainless steel polished wood. We've got brand new fridge lids. Look at these. Ta-da! Down here is our Corian bench top with the lid that we replaced and frame in there. This was the last bit of stainless that I did, the two little shelves here, and you've already seen the, uh, the new microwave, etc. We've got the port side fridge, new foam fiberglass lids and Corian frames. We've got our stowage for all our stainless steel pots and pans. We've made a little sliding out uh, cutlery tray, which worked really well. And we've got stainless steel taps. This is the salt water one, oven sinks, and Corian once again all the way across here and the uh, starboard beer and chocolate fridge has uh, new frames and seals and everything and uh, yeah it's a lot of work. A lot of work would be an understatement to see how we did this watch on. This is Brilliant 2 a Kelly Peterson 44 built in 1978. This is us the Smallwoods and this is the story of our long overdue boat refit. Welcome along for the ride. All right, so here we are in the galley. I'm about to make a start building in Corian the surrounds to the top loading fridges. It'll be a smooth transition. All you'll see is Corian from here all the way up to here and across the bench top. So I'm going to measure all of this up and go home and cut all the bits out that I need. So, good morning. What I'm starting to work on here is the cutouts for the fridges. The fridges have got like a multi-stepped surround for the seals to sit on, etc. and Basically, I'm just adding Corian to that. This is my drawing. It actually shows the existing lid and I'm basically going to clad it with Corian like this. I've already cut these on a table saw at the local boatyard. Now I'm just going to clean these edges up and then I'll go down to the boat. I'm going to use that framework in the fridge as my pattern for forming a removable drop-in frame and you'll see how that works out when we actually get down there and do it okay so i'm back down on the boat now i'm about to start putting the pieces in to make this uh, recess this is all solid timber here and behind the solid timbers there's foam so i don't want to take the foam away i don't want to take the timbers away so i'm going to clad the frame if you like with my corian i'm not going to glue it into here at this point i'm going to build it in here and take it out take it away and polish it up, make it look lovely, and then the thing will just fit in as a complete piece. I'm going to lose a, a little bit of the surround here, but it can't be helped. The actual side of the fridge is right here anyway, and if I took more away here, I wouldn't have a wide enough lip here for my rubber seal to go onto for the lid to sit down. So there's no two ways to do this, there's just one way and uh, it just means that we're going to have a slightly smaller opening here which we'll just have to live with. So I've just put the first row in. So that's basically how much we're going to lose is half an inch all round. Here's a little tip, measuring inside edges here with a tape measure. It's not really very accurate and you don't want to be doing too much sanding and mucking around with the ends of these. You can just cut a strip of ply like that, nice square um, end on them and all you have to do is to slide those strips apart like that a little welder's clamp there's the measurement you can't get it wrong really so my hatch frame is completed all the bits are cut and fit taped in the next thing i have to do is pull it all apart and then stick it all together with the epoxy that is corian and that's the tricky side of it, the stuff goes off very quickly. I've taken my frames out, they're all sitting there ready to go in. I'm putting packaging tape all around the inside of this wooden frame so that uh, this thing, whole thing doesn't get glued in. 
So I'm ready to start gluing in there. Now I don't know how this is going to go. How hard can it be? That went quite smoothly really. There's a couple of little discrepancies but it doesn't really matter because I'm going to do a big sanding job on all of this. This stuff's actually quite easy to sand. Anyway, it's in there. And that's our new Corian which lid frame. Well, the more beautiful one of the pair of us has just arrived for the uh, removal of the frame. Glued this together about 25 minutes ago and the glue is pretty hard and I think I could probably take it out. See how we go. It's moving. I would take it to you very gently. Oh yeah. All these bits overlap at the corners in different places, so this is really strong. Oh yeah, I see it coming up. Ten minutes later. Well, I don't want to rush it. No, I'm not suggesting that you should. Oh. Oh. Molding something, how good yeah. that is when yeah. you're going five glass molds. Oh, oh yeah. yes! Look at that. So we take this home and um, sand it all up. We put radius edges everywhere I can with the router, and then a, a polish of everything, and it should look like those professionally, like a one. <laughs> professionally made Korean kitchens. Cool. Well done, babe. So I've been sanding the frame here. I've also routed off the edges that I wanted to put a radius on. There's a few cracks here, joins that are still visible. You can just see them here. I'm gonna use the Corian glue to fill those joins. Before I do it on the actual frame, I'm gonna do a quick little test on the back of the frame, just to get the technique right. You have to work really quick with this stuff. It starts going off as soon as you use it. I'm going to try pushing like you do with a silicon gun first of all. You'll see how this mixes as it goes down the tube. It seems to work pretty well. You throw this away because this will go off in 10 minutes in there. And you put the little cap back on 
make sure it's the right way around. You can't get it wrong because it's got these locator pins. Close that and there's still more than half of this left. It's expensive but it goes a long way. And that's ready to use again. But the applicator, you'll have to use another one. You get two applicators with each tube. So you have to be careful, you have to plan what you're going to do with it. Otherwise you'll run out of applicators. I don't know if you can buy them on their own. I'm starting on the port side fridge and it's a little bit different to the starboard fridge in that I've actually got to remove this framework. It's got an angled top to it and we would end up with two smaller access point here. So the only way is just to take all this timber off which involves a lot of chisels, brute force and lots of banging and crashing. So here we go. So I've just finished a times a two hour chisel out. There's some of the wood that came out of it. I can measure up and then go and cut the strips then come back here and fit it all. So I'm about to put the frame for the fridge lid together. I've pre-cut all the bits and this doesn't need to be done actually in situ. It's a simpler shape than the other one. It's pretty self-explanatory this one. So this green foam I'm using to make our fridge lids is ideal because it's a closed cell urethane foam. So even if we did get some moisture here, it won't go through the foam. The boys here have been making a big fridge over there. That's what they've got this stuff for. And a couple of off cuts I'm using. I'm using a table saw to cut these down. It gives a nice straight fine cut. I'm just cutting it to size first. So I've got the um, external dimensions done on these two. Now what I've got to do is cut them to the correct thickness. I'm putting the rubber seal in here and putting my block of foam in. See where it sits. I'm going to mark up where my cut needs to be. Now I've got lines to follow all the way around. Cut my guidelines into the edges here. The rest of the material I'm going to remove the router set at the correct depth. Looking 
strong stuff. This is structural as well as being closed up. So you can use it in deck core, coal core, and fridges. I'm just going to run some guidelines across this. angles the lid's going to have angles on the sides that way it won't jam inside the frame and I'm just going to measure what those need to be off my drawing I'm going to cut them on the table saw so I've cut eight degree angles and that means that it won't even though you have quite a close tolerance at the edges here I've got about two mil all around you can even you can pick this up from one end and it still won't jam if you didn't have that angle on there that would jam so now we're ready to do the radius on the bottom edges of this the reason we put a radius here is because this is going to be covered with a bit of double bias cloth and the cloth what doesn't like wrapping around tight radius so just to be safe i'm putting a 12 mil radius on there and uh, it'll be much easier to glass and harder wearing, I guess. Anyway, here we go. This is ready for glassing. Give it a, a bit of a touch up with some sandpaper and we're ready to put some, some glass and double bias with some epoxy. I'm going to do that with a vibration saw. If you want to get a really accurate cut, really close to where you want the fiberglass to be cut down to, a good way to do it with a vibration saw is use a, a thin hand saw as a guide. You lay that down on the foam, push it down, go in like this, and it will only be about half a millimetre of glass to sand down. It's very accurate. I'm going to get into the horrible job of uh, sanding these smooth. sanding the fiberglass cover to these lids and I'll start putting some filler on. It's going to fill the weave of the cloth and it's basically an epoxy filler. Two pack, pretty simple, good stuff to use. I'm going to whack the stuff onto this one and I'm going to go and do some work with something else while that's going on. Good morning, we're down on the boat today in Operation Pimp Up Your Galley and today's first job is going to be to recess the sink down about six millimeters by its thickness to provide a level playing field here for the Corian to go on. So I'm going to pull this out, get the router out, tent this area up and route out the recess. <laughs> What I'm doing here is 
just getting ready to make my pattern now for this large piece of corian that's going to go in here so i've got the sink recessed in i'm just about to test fit the frames that i've made for the lids that's a pretty good fit i've got to cut a recess for this one as well about to start making the pattern for the biggest piece of Corian to go on. After all the preparation I've done, I'm now ready to start it. momentous moment another one in the evolution of brilliant tea the big piece of corian the big expensive bit is cut out and it's well semi cut out and we're ready to test fit it in the boat and then we're going to bring it back here and polish it all up once it fits hopefully it'll fit so the moment of truth let's get this thing down there let's do it Well, it fits. Yeah, it's crept out a couple of mil there and it's crept out a couple of mil there. Don't know why, but it doesn't really matter. That's why we made these lids so that the lids get assembled after this is in, just in case we crept out here or there. Now this end, look at that, there's the line that it had to line up with. That's perfect. That one's perfect. So what we do is we glue this down first. Yeah, yeah. We um, put glue in the gaps and then we go and glue it up. Wow. Okay. You got no gap. Yeah. Cool. Same over here. There's the gap. Yeah. Put the glue in. And pull it up. Yeah. And then we go in here and sand all the glue and polish and blah 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 blah. All the this is a bit cunning. Steps. It's like if we just draw the sink on rather than have a sink, we don't have to do any washing up. I didn't think of that, but that is rather brilliant. <laughs> So this will all have a rounded off yeah, edge. Yeah. And then there'll be another, a little piece of Corian will glue in there. Yeah. And then there's a big piece. That goes. Big piece to go in, the, in there. Yeah. Once this is glued in, we'll make a pattern of that bit and that'll go in. Yeah. Anyway, this works. Hooray. <laughs> Celebration. So this afternoon I'm working on the Corian lids. The foam parts, basically the insulation going on over here. Got a nice thick coat of primer on there. I'm gonna get rid of any imperfections. Whilst that's drying, I'm over here working on the Corian top. And what I'm doing is putting the pulls, stainless steel pulls, I'm setting them into the top here. I've made a simple jig for that purpose using the router. This is my jig. I'll clamp that on there. And then I'll just run the router with a four mil bit on it and run it around the inside there. And I'll end up with something that looks like that. And this is up, upside down, obviously, but it'll be in there. That's the first part of the recess that'll drop into there.
I've had a bit of a failure with the finish on the fridge lids. I thought I would be able to paint them with spray cans. It's a quick and easy way to do it. But the primer coat, it didn't go off properly. So I ended up having to rethink how to do this. Between us, we came up with the idea of, of just painting flow coat. We'll get a brushed finish, keep putting it on until we've got a thick enough coating. And then basically we just have to sand it back through the grades. We should be able to polish it right up. And at least we know that, that the gel coat will go off in these humid, humid and hot conditions. It's about 32 and it's, it's probably about 85, 90% humidity today. And that's basically why the single pack paint just didn't go off. So as you can see, I've taken all of the paint off again. I've still got some epoxy filler on there, the blue stuff. Um, that's okay, that all went off, that's completely stable. So I'm gonna get some coats of flow coat on here and pretty sure it'll work. I had a batch of uh, flow coat that didn't go off. So I had to scrape all the old semi-congealed, semi-hardened gel coat off and then get some new material and, and do it again. But luckily it all went off last night and they're all ready to install now. So I'll be a lot happier when this bench top is a big bit of Corian is actually glued down um, securely. And the other thing that happened was that when we found that the flow coat hadn't gone off, we couldn't actually buy any flow coat locally. So big thank you to the guys at Hawks Boatyard for coming to the rescue again. So hopefully this is gonna be the last time the sink comes out, isn't it? Ever. So the whole surface has just gotta get the light stuff up now, just to make sure there's a really good addition between the silicon on the Corian and the wood. We've scuffed this up. The first thing to do is to drop the frames into the fridges because they get trapped once you put the lid on. Right on. gentlemen is how to redo a galley. So at the end of it all, what do you think you've learned? Well we learned how to use Corian. I was a bit scared about it at first but don't let it put you off. It's easy to use. It's, it's really quite nice to use. I was surprised at how heavy it was. People who were trying to keep the weight down in their boats, that's an issue I suppose, but um, it's worth it for the utility value. We know that if it gets uh, worn or scratched up we, we just have to 
give it Sand a quick it polish back and or polish it or whatever. And uh, you've got 12 millimeters to play with. So it'll last you forever. What I really like about the new fridge lids is that, as well as looking fabulous, the insulation is really good. You put your hand on there, hand on there, and there's no temperature difference that you can determine. So they look great and they do a great job insulation wise. The stainless steel taps were a huge improvement as well, a little bit expensive, but uh, considering we've got a salt water system here as well as fresh water, it was just really good to have something that isn't rusting all the time. What we had there was pretty industrial before and now it looks very flash. Also having the sink properly recessed in so the countertop comes above it, it's just that bit more modern. And just little things like this, having the cutlery drawer on sliders, it just means that we're utilising space. As you know, on a boat, you've only got a limited amount of space. So the more that you can use it in clever ways like this, the better your quality of life is going to be. This is actually the first bit of the boat that's fully complete. It's amazing. <laughs> we started this whole refit project at the end of 2020 and it's now the beginning of 2023 i don't think we had any idea that it would take this long granted i think we've said before that we're doing it in amongst other things we're not working on it full time we've got jobs and schools and all sorts of other things going on uh, in the background so we're basically living several lives all at once uh, which is one of the reasons it takes so long so to actually get to a point where a section of the boat is fully complete is it feels really good doesn't Milestone. it Milestone. yeah it, it's great and funnily enough this galley was never on my original refit list for some reason i just had saloon and then i oh, just had separate project written for galley i don't really know what i thought was going to happen in here or how i thought it was going to be possible to do the saloon without doing the galley but anyhow here we are and what's next well we're going to finish the nav station over there and then i think the, with the drier weather coming i'm going to start doing the best we can to fix leaks which means taking the cap rail off we've got one big leak left and that is the cat whale so we're still sailing the boat while we've been doing the refit and a lot of the leaks have been fixed but the cat rail is a big issue and we've been sleeping in a wet bed the davits and all of that weight the boat is now down at the stern and so any leaks travel through the boat and end up at the lowest point which happens to be our cabin <laughs> <laughs> so it's a bit of an emergency. So anyway, thanks for watching along. Thanks for all the words of encouragement and stay tuned.